So, hi, Marian, how are you? Hi, hi, Amra. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm fine here. Thank you. And Thank you? you for being here. I'm going to. Um, so tell me, you have gone through diverse roles and experiences du during your career. Um, could you share a moment, a pivotal moment that led you to become an advocate for women empowerment and leadership parity? Thank you. Thank you for this question. It's I'm, I'm working with this now, but actually it started like almost not not almost 20 years ago when I uh, was working on a primary school in Nepal uh, and I saw the little girls over there and, and I noticed that some girls were little gems, you know, they had so much in themselves, but they didn't know it themselves. Right. So I tried to, to help them with my, my I, I didn't speak a lot of Nepali, but I had a few Nepali words that I spoke and the English to, to encourage them, to empower them just the little bit that I could. In 2012, I went back, um, but actually this time I had a, a female leadership journey and, and someone asked me the question, write down how you feel as a woman. Right. But I couldn't write anything down. Like, I, I, I already gave birth to a child. Uh, so I know my body was working. Yes, I am a woman. Right. But I didn't know what it really felt like to be a woman. So that's when my journey started. Like, okay, who am I as a woman? Yeah, and, and what are my characteristics? How how am I living? What, what am I doing? So right. uh, that's why I decided to to work now with women empowerment because it's so important that a woman gets a, a safe space to develop herself to understand who she is as a woman because first you need to understand who you are before you're able to live your life or to live your passion or, or to do what you're supposed to do or really doing from the heart because when you do something from the heart you can do it best Tell me, Marion, as a female entrepreneur in um, historically male-dominated industries, um, have you faced any unique challenges? Share an instance with us where you had to overcome gender-related barriers or stereotypes. Uh, when I go back, actually, at first, when I started to work in corporate worlds, what I did at first, I changed myself to become part of the male dominated environment. I remember that I was in the car with uh, my boss and I said, well, well, for you guys, it's always so easy. Wear a suit, you take a tie and shirt and it's done. Mm -hmm. And you know, but I, what dress shall I wear or this or that, you know, that's every morning my, which color, you know, that's every morning my, my dilemma. Right. Well, but you're allowed to wear suits as well. I said, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Actually, Marion, I want you to wear suits as well. Like, oh, okay. So, actually, at that moment, uh, I was living in Prague, and when I was back home in the Netherlands again for some for a weekend or so, I don't, I don't recall. But the first thing I did was go and buy suits. Interesting. So, it's something small, but so I adapted to the male-dominated world. And and now actually the past years, I uh, as I mentioned after 2012, more and more searching like okay, but what's 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 in it? Who am I as a woman? Yeah, I, I feel like okay, but I I'm allowed to wear a dress or, or uh, to, to wear what I want to wear. And one other thing is, uh, I remember sitting on the tables. I I uh, started opening offices for uh, the company I worked with in Scandinavia, and there were always um, managers coming over, or board members, always men, sitting at a table with men. And um, well, as a woman, I was, yeah, it's, it's, there is a word for it. It's insecure. I don't like the word, but mm. like, am I good enough? Yeah, they give me the job, but you know, I need to do it as good as the men because yeah. they seem so confident of themselves. And, and I had insecurity, which was so, presence but I wasn't allowed to show it 
you know, that's that's being part of a male-dominated environment. You're not allowed to show your vulnerability. You're not allowed to show insecurity. You're not you're not allowed to show all those things. But mm. It's part of who you are. So you're actually hiding yourself to be able to work. And that's I really that, yeah. that's contradiction to what I say, I'm saying now. You need to know yourself. You need to uh, be willing to show yourself. Yes. to work because then you are at your best right. so i was actually hiding my my best uh my best self you've been instrumental in fostering global female empowerment through initiatives like women of the world uh how do you envision bridging cultures and technology to address uh, some of the un sdgs sustainable development goals yes yes thank you um well one thing already for many many years i'm not talking about international i'm talking about intercultural mm -hmm. because you need to be able to understand the various cultures and yeah. i'm a farmer's daughter in the netherlands you know right. a dutch one right. but right. when i would have been born in africa or, or asia it would have been so different True. And uh, you cannot know everything in advance, but um, actually, it's it's about listening and and uh, yeah, yeah, open minds. Start with the open minds and out of the box, think out of the box, do out of the box, and then it's you can bridge cultures, you can bridge uh, borders, you can you can bridge so much together when you want to team up make sure that your team, if, if you have an, an international project, you have people from the various cultures that right. you work with. Right. But also, and I think before you start such projects, get to know each other because you have different habits than I have. Right. When you talk about SDGs, maybe in one culture, uh, the gender SDG is, is very important. The other culture, the, the water SDG. So uh, right. combine it and, and learn from each other. Listen Agreed. and learn. Yes. Because uh, maybe this time uh, you're going more into the water and, and uh, in Bangladesh, uh, the project will run better than, than in Pakistan. Right. But next time you will go on gender and then you will have more advantage of the project and the other one less advantage. Eh? It's give and take. I agree. Um, Marion, with your extensive experience in various sectors and locations, how do you approach the unique challenges that women face in different cultural and business contexts? You just spoke about, you know, uh, generally how uh, different cultures and how people need to understand each other. But for women specifically, how do you see it? Again, the listening, but also listen to the words that are not being said by a woman. I, I'll, I'll give you an example. We had um, a forum, it was about gender and, and uh, but uh, yeah, women empowerment was a subject uh, normally, at least for me normally. I see like 80% women and the rest a bit of men. But here it was 50-50. So that was for me very interesting to see. Very interesting. Yeah. We had a breakout session. And in those breakout sessions, <clears throat> were uh, questions actually pretty vulnerable questions to the women. But there were also men in the breakout session. Right. So what I saw was so interesting that, <coughs> excuse me, um, I, I saw it in the eyes of the women. They didn't give full answers. They 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 gave appropriate answers. To the questions right and after the, the, the day later i saw one of the women again and i said okay what was your experience and what did you think or what did you and then then the story came because i was there by myself as a woman to a woman we spoke and then i heard the full story right so um i i completely understand because i i have done the same and maybe i still do the same sometimes because i'm not perfect nobody is perfect it cannot be perfect but it's about learning and learning on the job actually so uh but 
yeah, it's it's also kind of self protection, of course, that you're not saying everything when you're not sure about the people who are there if you can trust them, because right. it's all about trust, of course. If right. you trust a person, you you will say more than when you don't trust a person. True, true. So, looking ahead, what's your vision for the next stage of your journey in promoting women's leadership, uh, fostering global empowerment, and creating a better future for all? women empower women that's where we started talking about yes. <laughs> and that's definitely the case uh what i see is very important there is various steps but what is very important for a woman who is starting just after business school or university yeah i'm talking about the corporate world now right uh, who's starting there is that she finds other women examples managers maybe women who are already a manager or who are longer in the company mentors can, indeed yeah but also not just a mentor but also like like yeah, to to as, as an example but also to to uh backfire with like what is your experience how should i do this how should i do that right. so indeed a mentor but also like a platform or community join communities because there you have a safe surrounding you have a safe space to say what you really want to say or, or to to just speak and, and yeah, um, brainstorm together like, oh, but I should do it. Oh, why not? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course I can do it like that. I've never thought of it. But then you are, feel, at least what I see when you're around women, you feel more secure to say what you, what's really on your heart. Right. So first that, first that mentor and, and uh, women platform or community uh, where you feel good and it doesn't let, need to be in the same sector it can also be somewhere else which community but right. among women and after that a woman feels more secure and she's able to speak out more to, to right. say what she really wants or what things what she thinks is necessary in a company where she works well and of course uh, which is very important it's not just women empowerment yes it starts with women empowerment but it is about inclusion women and men have to work together as a team because inclusion then you get so much more creativity absolutely yeah. when you have both genders working together it's both perspectives you yes. cannot fully understand a man's mind and a man cannot fully understand absolutely mind. absolutely just one little question i have before uh, we go. I just want to know. You said that you know women need to also find somebody that other women that they can talk to. So, uh, do you feel that as women we are not as accepting of other women uh, as men are of uh, other men? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, do you think that men accept each other more easily? They'll smoke together and drink together, or talk to each other and you know they will help each other and women are not so accepting of other women so they don't actually make other women feel secure whereas men do it differently do you feel that that is true yes i think that's true and and i can explain it for me like this men are very easy they they you know they are like buddies right have, right indeed having a cigarette together hey man how are you doing blah, blah, exactly blah, blah. Um, but we women, we first want to feel confidence and want to uh, have a connection before we will do something like that. You know, we are... We're we not as more... trusting of each other, I think. Somehow yes. we're not... Yeah. Yes, indeed. It's, the trust is, is our yeah. basis to go to a next level and it doesn't need to be a high level but also for a first level we we need more than just hey guys let's have a cigarette exactly. together exactly. it's 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 different. different it's different yes but it also when i when i lived in nepal going to the uh chok bazaar you know you always saw men together hanging uh over indeed over a cigarette or over a drink or something and women are busy with the children so that's then they already have connection points because right. uh, the children go to the same school or something so but it's yeah 
it's different. Yeah, that's that's the diff- big difference, I think. The, the trust part, indeed. Yeah. And also, maybe we need to uh, sort of change our attitudes and try, as women, try to help other women more. Definitely, more definitely. I think, but I see the world changing. That's changing in, in the world that's to, to help each other. Right. And it's not, you know, women, at least uh, in school, I remember from many years back, girls together can be, can have cat fights or, you know. Right. <laughs> I think it all oh, starts over there. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, see me, or, or I see it now with, my, with the teenagers as well. But it's not about being more important or more, uh, pretty or, or having more friends or this or this or this. No, it's about helping each other. Mm-hmm. And, and take because when you take another forward, next time someone else will help you. Exactly, exactly. Uh, just yeah. start with one little start thing. Start with one person, do, yeah. And inspiring right. one person and it will, be, it will become bigger. Agreed. Thank you so much for being here, Marion. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time, Amrath.